Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to service here for Plymouth United Church of Christ in Milwaukee. This is our penultimate summer worship in the park. We'll be back in five weeks for the final summer service here, poetry in the park. Uh, but uh, welcome again here today. We finally have decent weather, right? It's not too hot. Uh, thank the Lord. We are an open and a as we strive to be an inclusive church, sharing the life and teachings of Jesus as a healing manifestation of God's love and presence in the world. As the Just Peace Church, an immigrant welcoming congregation with an intentionally accessible building, we affirm diversity in all its forms, striving to recognize the ways that we have contributed to human injustices or oppression based on race, sexual orientation, ableness, or religious beliefs, and seeking ways to challenge these practices towards a more just community of faith. Toward a spirit of truth and reconciliation, we acknowledge that Plymouth United Church of Christ has been on land where indigenous caretakers are the Menominee, Potawatomi, and Ho-Chunk people. Whether you're with us today in worship as a member, a friend, a visitor, or just a passerby, we hope that you find a welcome here with our community at Plymouth United Church of Christ. Please join in our responsive call to worship. Calling all children of the living God, the gospel is good news for every age and every stage. Let us worship together, young and old. The good news is proclaimed in God's words and also with crayons, silly songs, snacks, meetings, and spreadsheets. Let us worship together, every generation. After months of learning and meeting behind screens or separated by dividers and physical space, we may still feel uncertain seeing so many faces again, but we come together seeking God's peace in this beautiful community. Let us, Let us worship, worship together, together united in Christ. Christ. Please join us in our hymn and sing if you are comfortable. This is Gather Us In, led by Larry Wheeler.
also say that our music is provided today by Chuck Lawton. Thank you, Chuck. Please join with me in our opening prayer. God, our teacher and our leader who helps us to understand the world around us. Thank you for the privilege of education and the privilege of work. In a year of turmoil, disruption, and loss, we recognize the gift of learning and the gift of working in ways we may not have appreciated before. We have blessed our communities with teachers who take new skills, concepts, and pass them along to each new class of young people. God, who came as a child to show us how to be fully human, to show us how to be children of God. You have, you have given, given us minds to grow and develop in unique, unique ways and unique speeds, and we are astounded by that miracle. You speak to us through the words, actions, play, and feelings of children. You call us to listen to the Spirit speaking through our young siblings in Christ. We celebrate the beginning of this school year and ask for your blessing upon the children, the educators, and the families of this world. We celebrate, too, the return to work in person and ask for your blessings upon the colleagues, the leaders, the partners, and the teams that support the work that will be done. But in this celebration of education we do not admit that our children and families and teachers do not have the resources they need. When systems are unjust, the outcomes are unacceptable. Today, we remember those who are beginning school this year, those who have what they need to learn and grow in safety, and those who lack supplies, teachers, safety We also remember those who do not have work, who do not have the resources they need, do not have a safe place to sleep or healthy food to sustain them. When systems are unjust, the outcomes are unacceptable. We come to work together to lift up our young people and all those who care for them and teach them. To lift those of us who are going back to work in person. Open our hearts to what you are saying to us today. Amen. We'll now have a mission moment from Lisa Schnell. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Am I close enough to the mic? Can you hear me okay? Barely. Um, barely? A little closer? Is that better? Okay. Um, so I'm Lisa Schnell. I'm an early child teacher of the deaf and hard of hearing at Niskara Elementary School. Niskara is a traditional Milwaukee public school serving children who are K-3 through fifth grade in the Washington Heights neighborhood. Um, and I am the committee leader of our um, playground redevelopment project that we are currently working on. Um, so Niskara was built in 1950. Uh, I'm sorry, 1924, and in 1950, it um, became one of two schools in uh, Milwaukee that specifically serve children with hearing loss. So our school, Niskara, um, works with children who uh, use listening and spoken la language with the use of technology. Um, uh, and then there is another school called Milwaukee Sign Language School that focuses on children who use sign language. Um, so I've been there, uh, I actually student taught there in 1998 and then have been there on and off um, since then. Um, I think I've been there probably about 15 years total of my 22 years teaching. Um, so in the springtime, the Plymouth Education Committee approached me um, to see if there was anything that we might uh, need at Mascara and conveniently, we are in the middle of a playground redevelopment project. So um, what we are focusing on is greening up our playground. Um, for those of you who have um, the flyer, there are more on the back table if you didn't receive one. Um, the, the front shows what our playground currently looks like and it is all asphalt. Um, and then um, in the um, program for today and on the flyer, uh, we have our dream, which is to um, 
really green up the space. Um, you can see that there are um, bioswales for water redirection. I should say that we are partnering with Reflow, which is a sustainable water solution company. Um, we have other partners, including Milwaukee Public Schools um, and MMSD and other partners as well um, that are helping us with, um, with the project and the plan so that we are appropriately um, redirecting water and, and besides making it a better space for children to play, to learn, um, it's also going to be environmentally sound and sustainable. Um, let's see what else I was going to say here. Um, so we we um, are about in the middle of the project right now. Uh, we started the the planning process. First of all, we received uh, we were accepted. Um, we had to go through a process of applying and uh, presenting our um, plan and we were accepted after two years. Um, we spent 2020 designing our dream playground um, and then uh, we've, we've been fundraising this year. So with, with our partners, we've raised about half of uh, what we need. Um, it's a $715,000 project, which I know is an astonishing number. Um, we have received several grants um, because it is um, a, a green project. Um, so our ask is uh, both financial right now, and I understand um, if you personally cannot give, but maybe you know other people, if you could let um, them know, or if you can, that would be awesome. Um, and then over time, um, it is a sustainable space that will need help. And maybe you're in the Washington Heights neighborhood, or maybe this is something you really um, appreciate. Um, especially during the summer months when um, Niskara isn't in school, we will be um, needing some help from um, other people in the uh, community. Um, I feel like this project is appropriate for Plymouth because um, it, it, um, it, 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 is, uh, it reflects our values of community um, and justice both socially and environmentally. Um, does anybody have any questions now or? I, I hope I covered everything. I can take questions later as well. Um, if you didn't get one of these flyers, if you want to see them, they are on the back table. There is a um, more developed plan in a booklet. There's a couple of those in the back as well. Thank you for your time, I appreciate it. Thank you, Lisa. Our first reading today are these words from the prophet Isaiah. Even youths will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Our readings continue with these words from the letter to the Ephesians. In light of all this, here's what I want you to do. While I'm locked up here, <clears throat> a prisoner for the master, I want you to get out there and walk, better yet run, on the road God called you to travel. I don't want any of you sitting around on your hands. I don't want anyone strolling off down some path that goes nowhere. And mark that you do this with humility and discipline, not in fits and starts, but steadily pouring yourselves out for each other in acts of love, alert at noticing differences and quick at mending fences. You were all called to travel on the same road and in the same direction. So stay together, both outwardly and inwardly. You have one master, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all who rules over all, works through all, and is present in all. Everything you are and think and do is permeated with oneness. But that doesn't mean you should all look and speak and act the same. Out of the generosity of Christ, each of us has given his own gift. The text for this is, he climbed the high mountain, he captured the enemy and seized the plunder, he handed it all out in gifts to the people. Is it not true that the one who climbed up also climbed down, down to the valley of earth? And the one who climbed down is the one who climbed back up, up to the highest heaven. He handed out gifts above and below, 
filled heaven with his gifts, filled earth with his gifts. He handed out gifts of apostle, prophet, evangelist, and pastor teacher to train Christ's followers in skilled servant work, working within Christ's body, the church, until we're all moving rhythmically and easily with each other, efficient and graceful in response to God's Son, fully mature adults, fully developed within and without, fully alive like Christ. No prolonged infancies among us, please. We'll not tolerate babes in the woods, small children who are easy prey for predators. God wants us to grow up, to know the whole truth and tell it in love like Christ in everything. We take our lead from Christ, who is the source of everything we do. He keeps us in step with each other. His very breath and blood flow through us, nourishing us so that we will grow up healthy in God, robust in love. Here end the readings for today. Good morning, Plymouth members and friends. Good morning. So good to see so many of you out this morning. Please pray with me. Dear God, be with us in our time of sharing this morning. God, what I prepared is not what you have in mind, that God, that you will put it aside, that you will speak boldly in this place. For we need to hear a word from you on today, for this is my prayer. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. There was a mom recently on social media who wrote a letter to her high school daughter as she prepared for the ninth grade. The mom said to her um, daughter she wanted to encourage her as she was um, entering ninth grade, a new class, new school, and what all of the ups and downs, would she, emotions she would have. Her mom encouraged her to get good grades as moms would do. Her mom encouraged her to find activities that she was passionate about. But the most important thing her mom encouraged her to do was to be a friend, to find the person who was sitting at the table by themselves, to not go with the crowd or when people are being bullied, to stand up for what is right and for others. Mother said that she shared these because these things are important too. It is great to get, it is important to have a thirst for learning, but more importantly, it's important to love one another. That's what our Bible teaches us, doesn't it? In John 15 and 12, it says, this is my new commandment that you and I, that we all as disciples of Christ, that we love one another. That it's not just something that we say, but that we put it into practice. The book of Ephesians in our text this morning emphasizes this too. Ephesians is a text that is attributed to Paul, and it focuses on the unity of the body of Christ. Ephesus, a part of um, Ephesians' story, focuses on, again, on loving one another, being patient with one another, having humility for one another. Is there, is, if there's ever a time in our city, in our homes, in our communities, in our church, that we need unity more than ever before. But as I was saying, the city of um, Ephesus was a part of that Ephesian story. It's a large commercial city. It had many trade routes. Um, it was a known for a city that sometimes worshipped the god of Dinah. It was considered the seven wonders of the world when people travel all over to visit it. But um, Paul, he really wanted the people as he was talking to the people of Ephesus. He wasn't writing a letter to people because he was chastising them, because they had done something wrong, as he had done with Corinth, that there was a lot of disunity and backbiting, not in Galatia or Philemon, but he really was writing to the people as he was focusing on his time, that his, he was at the sunset of his years, as he was in prison. And he wanted to emphasize to the church in Ephesus the importance of love and humility and joy and patience with one another. How fitting for us. How do we be the church in our schools this fall? How do we be the church on our jobs, in our places where we volunteer, in our homes, you know, maybe with people that sometimes we can't even stand, maybe brothers or sisters, you kind of 
get up under your skin. I know you don't have anybody like that this morning, but that's those other people at those other churches or other families. But yeah, he was talking to those other people, not, not Paul raised to the church. Paul says, I want you while I'm locked up in prison um, for teaching and preaching. I don't want you to sit on your hands. I want you to walk and um, don't, just, don't just run, but God has called you to something. So maybe you're asking yourself, what am I called to do? Maybe you're a young person here today. You're just like, I don't know what it means to be called for something. Maybe it, it's kind of the things that you do. What are the things that you can do? Or maybe you're trying to really explore what is God calling me to do? Maybe you bake pies and you are good at baking pies. Maybe you contribute money to the, you have the gift of resources and maybe the gift of fundraising and can help uh, Lisa as they, uh, and Nascara as they work on that playground project. Maybe you hold some, um, you know, you, you can hold someone's hand as they're walking into school on the first day of school. You guys remember, I think it was like a couple of years ago with young boy, there was two, you know, the young black boy and a little white boy and they were had their backpacks on and one of the children, they were crying and the boy reached out his hand just to hold his hand as they were waiting to enter school. That's, you know, I think that's what God is calling us to do. That's what Paul is really emphasizing, the ability of unity as a body of Christ. Maybe you don't really know your gifts. We talk about gifts. Gifts aren't just what we get. Are talking about gifts that we get at maybe your birthday or Christmas. But these are things that God has planted deep within us that we are born with. Some of us here today are artists. or Some of us are helpers by nature. Some of us are musicians. Some of us are good at the details. Some of us know and we have that sixth sense that someone is hurting. But we are all called to use our gifts and our hands with whatever God has called us to do. Use what we have. Paul knew that it would be hard. That's what he says in our text. Sometimes we look at our gifts and our, 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 our gifts and abilities and they look small in comparison to maybe our neighbors. And maybe, you know, you're good at writing and maybe you're good at playing soccer. Maybe you're really good at plants and you're maybe you're the one like myself in your yard you've been trying to work for years and yet you still have that open sore of a desert place in your yard and maybe you need help in those areas. And we thank God for friends who come along to help us in those times. But Paul says to us, even if you're like myself, you're not good at gardening, don't give up. He says, don't give up. It'd be easiest for us to give up because we look at someone else's gift or someone else's yard or someone else's gift to of music and we say to ourselves, I'm not good at that. Yet, maybe God didn't really bless me with a really good gift. It says, it's been said that the comparison is the thief of joy. We talked about that a few weeks ago, about the story of the talents. Remember that, you know, the, um, the owner of the land gave one um, person like five talents, one, three, and then one, one, and then the one who had five, they maximized, one had three, and then the one who had one, they were looking at the one who had at three and five, and yet they buried their talents in the sand. And what we learned in that parable is that we're not called to bury our talents, but to maximize what God has given us. Each doubled their talents, the one who had their talents is their talents. God wants us to use our gifts to the glory of God, to not hide your light under a bushel, but that we might make it for all and bright to see to the and always pointing back to God. What are your gifts that you have been given? And so I'm going to pause for a second because this is an intergenerational worship experience. So maybe I want you to pause for a second and think, what are your gifts? What is God giving has blessed you with? Can you think for a moment? Can you yell out for a second? What are your gifts that God has blessed you with? A loud voice. A loud voice. <laughs> Anybody else? What is it that you are good at? What can you do? What can you do? Listen. You can listen. Anybody else? Any very yeah. little young ones that are on the ground? Are you good at something? Like, what are you guys good at? Um, We're good at playing. At playing. And yeah. that is great. And maybe you can always, like, and when you go to school, that you can include somebody else in your game while you're playing. That's what God is calling us to do today. So maybe that as you as you have your gift of playing, you can include someone else in your game as well. Anybody else have a gift that they can say that they have that they can utilize? 
Tennis. Tennis. Awesome. Tennis. That is great. That is a great game. I heard singing. Singing. Awesome. What else? Writing. Writing. Yes. Swimming. Swimming. Oh my gosh, my daughter had to meet you. Swimming. Those are fun things. Yes. All right. But Paul reminds us to not to stop. So sometimes we're good at those things, but then we get stuck. Maybe you're good at writing and you're like, hey, I have a writer's block. Maybe you're good at swimming and then you have a, a time, you know, like we've seen with Simone Manuel that you get stuck in your gifts and you're stuck within, you know, um, you know, stuck with, you know, you're nervous and you can't really do the things that you thought you could do. And you're like, hey, I'm really good at that thing, but why can't I win this tournament? Why can't I put, you know, get things, you know, make my body work all together? But God has said, don't give up. We have to walk out our own path. Yesterday, my daughter and I, we went to the park and we were uh, riding and, um, and she rode a bike and we walked up different paths. Some of them were bumpy. Some of them were gravel. Some of them were worn by foot traffic. Some of them were paved. And I think this is just kind of like our lives. We can allow the path that someone else is on to rob us of our joy, of enjoying the path that we're on. That while we were walking the path, that there was a man riding his bike, I think with so much joy, I've never seen that before, that he was riding, and he hit the, um, the, the um, ramp, and then he'd come back down and do it again. And he was just having a fun time all by himself, that because he was having so much joy, enjoying his, his time that in nature, that my daughter is like, oh, he's having so much fun, let me try it too. And so that's, I think, that what God calls us to do that we enjoy the gifts and the abilities that we have been given, that we might bless someone else with joy and, and maybe that they might be inspired to enjoy the path that they are on. That may the road that you find yourself this fall, you do it so well with so much joy that you influence others to have joy as well. A second reminder is as we head back this fall, is that sometimes we get tired that we want to give up, that there's a sport you tried is difficult. Maybe there's a project you're working on that says don't give up. Again, um, you know, again, Isaiah 40 reminds us that friends on this Backpack Sunday, don't give up. It says that they that wait on God, God shall renew their strength uh, like eagles. They shall run and not grow weary. What do eagles do? That they catch the wind and they glide with the wind. They catch at the right angle, the right current, then they should run and not be weary. And so maybe if you're feeling weary that sometimes we just have to catch the wind at the right time and just kind of flow with the wind and you'll find yourself at the right time on the right path. We don't know what the school year will bring a hold for us. We don't know what the fall will bring. You know, we still have COVID, yes it is. We don't know how things will be as a community of faith at Plymouth, but whatever happens, we can choose to have Humility. We can choose to be um, to work for unity. We can choose to have joy, and we can choose to love. Because if we don't want to be a, a, a people who are divisive, but we want to walk in love, we we'll go back to what the text says from um, from John 15. That I give you this new commandment that you love one another. You don't remember anything else. On and this fall, as you go back to work or as you go back to school, that we choose to love one another. Hallelujah. And amen. Amen. <laughs> Are young, um, if you brought a backpack or a briefcase, if you can come up at this time, we're going to bless your backpack, briefcase, purse, however you like to do it. And we'll do that on today. This is for 
people who are working. These are people who are caring. If you just have a purse or, you know, you may come up at this time as well. Like, that's my bag and that's one I carry with me to and fro. Then please come up. All right. Steady and comforting God with you in every transition and new start is a reminder of your goodness. For you are always creating fresh, amazing things in us and through us. Who, though we are sad about summer's ending, we are grateful for this school year and time of work, especially this one. After all we face and overcome and release this past year COVID-19, we come to this year changed with mm -hmm. new levels of gratitude, hope, and connection in us. Together, we appreciate the opportunity to learn and grow. Know it is one of the biggest privileges we have. And it can give you a physically being friends, colleagues, and teachers. So this year feels like a holy heart. With faith and love, we now offer everything we are to you. Asking for your blessing. We pray for students and workers of all ages, abilities, and backgrounds. We pray for our hearts and all they hold, excitement and nervousness, disappointment and hope. We give you all our loves and fears. We pray for steady self-esteem and deepening resilience. Loving God, hold us in our prayers. We pray for our minds that they will expand in wonder and celebration learning not just from the books studied, but the people beside us. Open our minds with the willingness to be changed in unexpected ways, and settle our thoughts in peaceful places. Loving God, hold us in our prayers. We pray for our hands, that they will reach out to help, welcome, and care. Bless our hands with patience and dedication as they grip pencils and type on keyboards, Swish paint brushes and clap in song, grip tools and lunchbox handles, spin wheelchair tires and basketballs. Loving, Loving God, God hold us in our prayers. We pray for our mouths that they will speak words bringing life and connection. Help us use our mouths to honor the dignity and belovedness of all. Remind us to open our mouths for deep belly breaths when we are feeling anxious or afraid. We pray for our feet, that they will move toward those different from us and help others in safe ways. Plant our feet next to those who feel alone and bless our steps down hallways and sidewalks. We know that you are with us wherever our feet go or stay. Loving God, hold us in our prayers. We pray for our eyes that they may see ourselves and others with compassion. Point our eyes toward those who are forgotten or struggling. Grow us in flexibility to see from all kinds of angles. Bless what and how we see, whether we're looking at a screen, a whiteboard, or beauty of a person's face. And help us see with the most important eyes, the eyes of the spirit within us. Holy God, hold us in our prayers. We pray for our ears, that they will genuinely listen to all voices, especially those that haven't been listened to much. When things get noisy, help us listen extra carefully to your voice. Help us hear with the most important ears, the ears of the Spirit within us. Love God. Love we pray for the health and wholeness, fun and growth, surprise and amazement, for this school year ahead, knowing you will hold us all the way through. We thank you, God, and love you.
thing. Okay, attack. Okay, we have. Here we go. Be loved, be kind to you. You are loved. Okay. Anybody else? Oh, yeah, TJ. Okay. Okay, sure. Okay. All right. Anybody else? Okay, here. Anybody? No, thank you. Anybody else? following people concerns in our community. Um, we have prayers for Steve Amran and uh, Stacy Circle at the birth of their daughter Lily born on July 6th. So that is so exciting. We got this chance to see them on Wednesday with the bundle of joy. That, that's really nice. I'm going to continue to pray. Uh, William's here today. We're so thankful William's here today. But we continue to pray for him. William Chancellor, the Greenwall, Kate Phillips, Hakima, Karen and Russell Brooker, John Wisey, Beth Chancellor's grandson Xavier, Rebecca Schrader, Sanji Chetta, Anne and John Dales. Can we also uh, pray for Alex Hill? First, oh yes, that's Please. right. I had to wait and ask her. She didn't respond back. So yes. Uh, first for Alex Hill, um, had a procedure this week, and so we uh, pray uh, pray for him. I mean, she says he's looking on the up. And so uh, we're grateful for that. Oh, yeah. So for Alex Hill, um, I was just waiting because she didn't respond back whether she wanted that known. But he had something done this week, and he is on the up. So our prayers are for Alex Hill. This, uh, all right. Let's see here. Our invitation to communion. May God be with you. May God, May God be with you. People of God, open your hearts. We open them to God and one another. People of God, give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks to God, who offers us lives filled with grace. Let us pray. Dear God, we thank you so much for uh, this day. We thank you for what we've heard in our scriptures from Ephesians and Isaiah 40, reminding us in times where we feel weary that we just simply have to kind of wait for sometimes things to pass and that things will get better. We also were reminded, you know, that God, that you have called us for such a time as this to use our hands and our feet for your good. Allow us to stir the gifts within us. We pray for those who are sick in mind, body, or spirit. And we're reminded of the work that you have done, Jesus, in the here and the now. And that we pray that we might go as we take this communion cup and we eat this bread, that we might go out in great ways to serve you. And now we pray the prayer that you taught us to pray. Some of us, we call you mother. Some of us, we call you spirit. But together, and some of us, we have no words to even mention about who you are. But together, we say the Lord's Prayer. 
our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. So we remember on the night of Jesus' desertion and betrayal, he took the bread and he broke it and said that this is my body, which is broken for you and for me. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, he took the cup and he said that this is my blood, which is poured out for remission of sins. The body of Christ and the cup of salvation. I always want to know what is the why for why we do things. And I'm reminded that we are the body of Christ. We talked about our gifts this morning in the book of Ephesians and Paul talking about why it is important. And so that we're reminded that we can't say that I'm the neck or I'm the arm and so I'm any less important. But we are all important to the body of Christ. No matter whether we are, our gift is just simply playing this morning or maybe it's sitting or it's working or volunteering or just changing to our children that we are all part of the body of Christ. Our cup represents our individual gifts and that God has blessed us with. I was reminded of that, those words in that Sermon on the Mount that we say, let your light shine before men, women, and people that we might glorify our God which is in heaven. And so we go in the school year letting our light shine. And so we take the, the bread, again, body of Christ. The cup of salvation re represents our individual gifts this day. Let us take and eat the bread and the cup. of Thanksgiving. Let's read it together. Nourishing one, one, your gifts renew us, us in body, spirit, and mind. Through this taste of love, love, may the Spirit send us with a faith that is great. Let, Let no institution or narrow thinking hold us back. Make us people who boldly pursue collective justice and tend gently, gently to the world's pain. Amen. starting tomorrow through next Sunday and Donna comes back tomorrow. <laughs> um, Kathy Greenwald's memorial service is next Saturday, October, sorry, August 7th. <laughs> Teresa will be off the 8th through the 21st and emergency pastoral care will be available should you need it. Um, August 29th is our day of service. And so we will be volunteering in and around Plymouth Church. Um, plan to bring your own picnic lunch and a lot more details will be available shortly. Uh, Russell Brooker is looking to give away Brewers tickets for September 8th. So if you're interested, contact Russell. And our next worship in the park will be Poetry in the Park, led by our very own Emily Aubrey. All right, and with that, join us in singing Shine, Jesus, Shine. What, what time is Kathy Grinwald? What time is Kathy Grinwald service? Two. Two. Two o'clock. Two
of your mercy and strength and help us appreciate most of all the bedrock miracle of your presence with us in every single ordinary sacred moment. May the changes in ourselves and our world through this pandemic bring layers of goodness that we'd have never had otherwise. Leave us this year into life-giving rhythms of grace and light. We are ready to Amen. All right. Have a great week. Thanks for watching. Thank